Wow, guys, we have had a crazy week. That's why you probably haven't seen me that much on YouTube lately. It's just been a crazy year all, all, all year, kind of. We, uh, we started off, we ended last year with starting this nonprofit called Meet My Neighbor Productions. And some of you don't quite understand what that is. So what that is, is we're out filming for documentaries right now to, to put on small farms. And well, it doesn't have to be a small farm. It could be a large farm. These farms are farms that are interested in doing things that are a little more sustainable, regenerative, and humane for their animals. We consider that good stewardship and good husbandry. And the reason why we're doing it is to help educate others. Um, something that we have found along this journey is that um, a big side to regenerative farming practices is that it's actually more economical for the small farmers. So by doing these documentaries, sharing these stories, and letting you hear from all these different farmers what it is that they're doing, um, we're also helping to educate you. We're helping to educate the public on why they should buy food from, you know, small farmers, local farmers. And it's just a great overall documentary series. We, we love putting it together. Now these videos, like the one I'm doing right now, are vlogs. The reason why we do these is because it takes a very long time to put together a professionally edited documentary film. It only takes a few minutes to do a YouTube video. So we do these videos along our journey to kind of share with you guys who we're filming, who we're working with, uh, so that those who have donated and contributed to this nonprofit can have an idea of what we're doing. So this video, I'm not, you know, it's not, you're not hearing from them necessarily. We try and edit in some, some fun parts of our journey with them, but this is just kind of an update video to show you guys what it is that we're working on. So anyway, when we started this series, we've been filming a lot of sub, uh, rural farms, and that's kind of been a lot of our focus because we live in a rural area. And as we expand, you know, we'll continue to cover rural farms because there's a lot of farms in rural communities. People don't understand though that there are also city farms or urban farms and farms that specifically service a city area. And this is important for those who are concerned about uh, food security and sustainability as far as having resources when you live within a city. I've had a lot of people on the channel ask me over the years, what can I do if I live in a city? I live in a city, I, I don't have access to these things. And so what we've decided to do is each year, we're gonna select a city to go to, that the nonprofit's running. And the nonprofit just depends on, on you guys, the viewers to continue to contribute. But each year we plan to go to a city and cover this, the, the metro food system, the farmers that are making up that system, which is going to consist of both urban city farms as well as some farms right outside the city. This year is their first year doing it, so we went to St. Louis. <laughs> things about kind of covering both the rural and the metro farms is that we're getting a large dynamic of people who are doing who all just have a love for creating uh, nutritious food for their community day one uh, was really kind of I, I went out on my own and I just covered some of st. Louis I went and and got some of the the uh, what we call b-roll for our our city grown STL episode is what we're gonna call it and some of these farms, some of the larger farms will also have their own episodes as well. But uh, the city grown SCL episode is a good way to kind of combine some of the smaller farms that we can't get enough coverage on to do an entire episode, but be able to include them in the program. Anyway, so the first day of filming, besides my little uh, rendezvous downtown St. Louis, Shauna and I went together to cover uh, most rooms and Be Simple Farm. My 
methodology is use what you got that's like free, locally sourced, you keep this up out of the landfill. So, um, these wood pallets, locally sourced, free, like these steaks I think I got from my dad. Um, and then I had all these, these burlap bags are from a local coffee roaster. So all I did was just put these like stakes in the ground. So I'm like, these, they were like tied together with uh, whatever, wrap, whatever. Looks like these t-shirts. Yeah, it's t-shirt. Yeah, and then if we are, I, well we, me, I'm going to turn this into like a living wall, but I was gonna do herbs back here. So we're gonna do like thyme and other things yeah. to grow out of here. Um, but I put the filtered compost into these burlap bags. I'm mean, gonna have to put, like cut it down flat because I, like, I didn't have to measure anything. I just like cut it, like put it in place. I have to, I, I had to put these compost piles somewhere. Like we're gonna put in raised buds. I can't have like seven compost piles. So I was like, I'm gonna put them inside these ugly burlap bags that I don't like. And then no one's gonna see it because I'm gonna grow like thyme, whatever. I think, you know, mm -hmm. this, this is north. So it's not gonna get that much. I'm Danielle Mirt. I'm the founder of Mo Shrooms Regenerative Micro Farm in Ellisville, Missouri. Um, at Mo Shrooms Regenerative Micro Farm, I have converted my half acre in the suburbs in West County to all edible landscaping. And the main feature, because we are in a super shady yard, is mushrooms. But also I grow a lot of leafy greens and other pollinators that mainly do well in the shade. Where I live is near Rockwood Reservation, so it's like really like rocks in the soil and trees above ground, so I really can't um, plant anything directly in the soil, it's too rocky, so I'm building the beds up with compost. And I have a residential composting service where I go pick up people's food waste every week, and in exchange for their food waste, they can also order my seasonally available, locally grown, pesticide-free pesticide um, produce. Composting in the city is a great way to grow dirt. If you don't have dirt, you can't really grow much. And so these composting services are actually very important. And, and a lot of times they'll take the compost, that if, you, if you're a part of the, their service, they'll take your compost materials, create compost, and then return it to you. Most rooms returns produce and stuff grown in the compost. They actually eat, I wanna say they eat the, they don't actually eat the rotting soil, they eat the microbes that come onto the rotting soil. Their castings just gets back to this. Oh, there's so many worms right here. This is a good shot. It's shape, oh, too. Okay, hang on. Yeah. At first, I don't see them, but then, like, the more you get going, the more you turn it, then they're like, hello, hello, goodbye. Look at that monster. My name is Mary Densmore, and I, my farm is Be Simple City Farm here in St. Louis, Missouri. We grow microgreens, a whole different, a whole selection of different kinds of microgreens, and we make honey, or the bees make the honey, really. Um, we raise the bees and keep the bees as best we can and sell their honey, and then I make handmade soaps, lotions, and lip balms with uh, the beeswax and other products. We sell our products in a variety of ways. Um, one way is we sell directly to the customers at the farmer's market in Tower Grove Park. It's on Saturday mornings. And another way is I sell to restaurants. And then the last way is I do retail sales. So I'll sell to grocery stores and I also sell to large CSAs that sometimes source from different farmers. When I was a young girl just playing, I grew up in the suburbs of Atlanta and I have really vivid memories of I would play outside and I would pretend like I was harvesting things. Our backyard, um, I mean, my dad did a great job landscaping our backyard, but it was mostly just grass and a few trees. And I would pretend, I would like pick up little rocks and things like that and I would pretend that they were berries and I would pretend that I was making some kind of a meal or concoction. I would mix like mud and water together and just like play basically. Um, play cooking from ingredients from the earth. So it's really fun to me to think of myself now as a farmer because I'm like, oh, my young self will be really happy with how I grew up <laughs> or who I grew up to be, I guess. But I guess we're also always the same person that we always are. So I haven't really changed that much. So it shouldn't be that surprising. So the next day, uh, Shauna and I kind of split up and went two different ways. 
So I am headed to Heartbeat Farm, which is about an hour outside of St. Louis, headed north. Charlie and I are kind of doing a divide and conquer today. He is headed to such and such farm, which I believe is the opposite direction south of St. Louis by about an hour. So we are going to check out what they're doing. We have, um, both of these farms are bigger operations than the other urban farms. However, they both also feed St. Louis. They are either a participant of a CSA or truck it in all the way to town to the markets. So it's going to be interesting to see their dynamic and what they're able to grow out on their land. My name is Nikki Morgan. I'm one of the four co-owners of Heartbeat Farm in Eolia, Missouri. So Heartbeat Farm has four owners, myself, Nikki Morgan, my wife, Katie Hosteller, and my two parents, Beth Morgan and Daryl Morgan. Heartbeat Farm is uh, a di diversified vegetable farm primarily. So we grow over 70 varieties of vegetables and 50 varieties of herbs. Um, but we also do forest farming, maple syrup production, um, we have pastured poultry for eggs, um, so we do a lot of different things on the farm. We sell primarily to consumers through our CSA, our Community Supported Agriculture Program, and then we also sell locally at the Lake St. Louis Farmers Market. We do a little bit of wholesale to um, restaurants or small grocers in the St. Louis area too, but primarily to end consumers. We'll be heading out to um such and such farm, which uh, raises such and such. But it's a, uh, I think that that's gonna be a cool little farm to cover. And a little, I mean, they've, they've got over a hundred acres, I believe. I'm the owner of Such and Such Farm in DeSoto, Missouri. Such and Such Farm is a boutique farm. We offer a lot of things, everything from produce to maple syrup to eggs, milk, and wonderful pasture-raised pork. We have a 42-person CSA. We're in two different farmer's markets, and we also sell to chefs around St. Louis. Russian wild hogs on a, um, a rotation set in the setup. I think it's probably one of the best um, pasture raised hog setups I have seen yet. It was a beautiful setup, uh, very well organized. Um, they also, obviously, they do produce, they do chickens, they do goat milk, they make uh, cheeses, they, they do everything. I guess that's why it's called such and such. Um, but it was a great farm to visit, great people. Um, on the When I was out filming the hogs, I had walked back. I wanted to try and get some shots of the hogs back in the woods uh, because that's a very natural habitat for them. And as I was standing there, I heard a crack along the fence line and looked over. And um, I actually saw two coyotes, but I got one of them on film uh, kind of stalking from the outside of the fence line. They didn't get through. But uh, it was really cool to see. Uh, you don't, I've, I've seen coyotes in broad daylight on our farm several times. I guess it's something you, you see randomly, but it's not every day that you're standing there with a video camera when it happens in a zoom lens. So I did my best to get them on, on film, but without them recognizing that I was there or maybe they just thought I couldn't see them. I, so such and such and heartbeat were the two bigger farms that we were covering on this trip. Um, I've talked about most rooms 
and I've talked about Be Simple Farm, that was four farms. We also went to a farm called New Earth Farm. We're John and Stacy Klein and we're with New Earth Farm. Uh, we're here in Old North St. Louis, uh, which is a part of St. Louis, an old historic area. Just north of downtown. The arch is like a mile that way. We named the business New Earth Farm because like New Earth, we're literally taking banana peels and coffee grounds and things scraped off a dinner plate and it's becoming soil, like it's New Earth. So um, we're not making it, you know, God is through nature. There's a kind of a growing concept of city, in cities of farming compost. There's all these little community composters just popping up all over over the U.S. It's, it's kind of like blowing up, but it's, it's like been going the next on. brewery <laughs> scene. They have a different method of composting, uh, something that I think you guys will find interesting. What we do is called aerated static uh, composting. We technically could turn over compost in like three months in this process, which is very quick. Uh, but if you want really good compost, it's going to cure for, for longer than that too, up to a year or so. So definitely stay tuned for New Earth Farm. They, they are very cool people. And again, they're running a compost service. So if, you, if you're in St. Louis and you sign up for their service, you give them composting materials, they compost it, and then they give you compost back, which is pretty cool. You can grow plants in it and you don't have to deal with all of the composting yourself. Um, everything that we eat comes from the soil. And so the more nutrient rich, the more biodiversity you have in that soil, uh, the better the quality of the food. You know, it's, it's just, it's, it's amazing how much you can taste the difference in farm fresh food and, and farm fresh food raised in good soil than other types of food. We also visited some community gardens. Now this is something I didn't know, but something that you guys might be curious about is if you live in a city and there's a community garden, so the community garden will often produce together um, some crops and produce to sell at the local farmer's market. But they also create, uh, in some of these gardens, raised beds or areas where you could lease to grow your own food. All of these are like the community working together to sell at a community garden, and then these are all individual rows for individual people. Cool, huh, that they can like, I guess, yeah. rent out? One of the community gardens that we went to, the, uh, a year lease was like 20 bucks for a raised bed. Super cheap, super inexpensive and you have your own plat to grow your food on, which is important for those who are living in a city environment and can't get around to everything. One of the community gardens we visited was um, a red circle. I am Erica Williams, founder and executive director of A Red Circle, which is a nonprofit organization in North St. Louis County. And we are currently at the space of one of our growing sites, the North County Agricultural Education Center, which is located in Pine Lawn, Missouri, a suburb of St. Louis, also in North St. Louis County. Good food connects us. It connects us to each other. It connects us to the earth. It connects us in ways that you wouldn't know that you needed until you began to experience. You know, oftentimes families, when they're sitting down together for a meal, they take for granted that not every family, not every community has that option. So when we're able to provide that and to provide good, nutritious, tasty food, it just makes me so excited. The Red Circle is a community garden that's pretty much focusing on raising food in an area that's considered by the USDA to be a, uh, a food desert. There's not a lot of fresh food there and it's they're trying to figure out ways to help educate the community on eating fresh food, offering them the opportunity to buy fresh food. You've heard the term food desert. The other term is food swamp. So a food swamp, also a USDA term, is a region that has a high concentration of unhealthy food. Someone uh, called them hunger prevention products. So the cookies, the chips, the, you know, instant noodles and things of that nature that are super cheap at the beginning, but you pay for them with your health and with your life. You, you find in grocery stores and, and some areas of, of St. Louis or some certain areas that there's less fresh produce there. Over 700,000 people don't have accessible uh, um, 
sustainable produce within a half mile of their community, uh, which, is, which is sad. And part of that is because the grocery store is a private entity, They're, they have to put produce out there for folks to buy. If people aren't buying it, they stock less of it in certain stores. I, I used to be vegan, actually. And in 2017, uh, I usually go to like farmers markets and things of that nature, but I wanted to go to a grocery store that was closest to me. I went in there, I didn't like what I saw. Uh, you know, the, the, the selection was horrible in my eyes. And then I went from that location and I went to an, another one that got Midtown, kind of like on Lindo and Central West End. That was a step up. It was still better, not quite what I expected. So I was like, you know what, I'm turning to a field trip. So I stuck with the same chain. Then I went to the suburbs, I went in Clayton. That was much better. You could close your eyes and do a spin and pick up something and you got what you want, right? So then I went to, I called the super suburbs. I went out to West County. I went in there like, man, the structure on the outside alone didn't look like the same structure of the other same business. I'm like, wow, this even looks different. So I went in, I see people cooking sushi. You got people, you got a winery in there. I'm like, they don't have a winery in that one where I stay. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna do something about it. That's what I did. So what is important about Hero Urban Farm and the Red Circle is that they're providing another source of fresh, nutritious food, and they're educating people about it. They're bringing people out to show them how the food is grown, let them taste the food. They're, they're giving them resources to understand why it's important to eat garden fresh food and why fresh produce is so important for them. We do uh, vegetables and fruit. So we do a lot of lettuces, different Asian greens, uh, such as bok choy, tat soy, chamasi, I think I'm pronouncing it right. Um, we do broccoli, watermelon, which is my favorite crop, uh, cantaloupe, strawberries, uh, tomatoes, cucumbers, peppers, uh, a slew of things. And we also had the opportunity when we were at Hiru Urban Farm to talk with a, another uh, young lady, her name is Leah, and she has a nonprofit farming business as well called Growing Food, Growing People. My name is Leah, Leah Burnett. Leah, what do you do? I am a farmer. I am a woman that is passionate about her community and delivering healthy food to her community. That's what I do. I deliver healthy food. Healthy food. With a smile. With a smile. I was gonna say, yes. look at you, you're beaming. <laughs> Definitely with a smile. So, yep, that's what I do. Get dirty all day. Yep, feed, yep. My, feed my soul and my spirit with the soil. Yep, that's what I do. She's setting up a really beautiful garden uh, out at the, uh, the center that she and Hiru uh, both have farms at, and so, uh, it was a great experience to meet with all of those different people, learn about all the different challenges that they're facing and, and really kind of, you know, get a fuller perspective of farmers. If we want to understand farming, we want to understand the issues that farmers are facing, we have to look at all the farmers and we have to, you know, see what they're all experiencing to really get a full perspective of it. All of these farmers are contributing to food security by offering a sustainable local food supply. All these farmers are, uh, are working towards regenerative practices where there is either no-till or they're using animals and livestock in the appropriate manners, which falls into humane. And so that's the criteria we use when we select our farms. We're looking for people who are good stewards and who are uh, practicing good husbandry. And we're finding a slew of people, people from all different walks of life. And it's just been an exciting journey for us. And, you know, we hope when the series comes out, you guys will really like it. We've got a lot of different people on there with a lot of different perspectives, but they're all working towards the same goal. So anyway, if you, as you can imagine, this was an expensive trip. We're only, we're not even halfway through the year. We have a long way to go. Um, so help us keep going with Meet My Neighbor Productions, make a donation. Um, any donation, any size donation is, is appreciated. It takes all of you to bring us to these farms and it's turning into an incredible documentary series. We can't wait to see how this progresses over the years.